Uh, hi, so we are going to try something a little bit different today. I've been making Camtasia videos for you, but uh, we're into a bit of a harder section. Um, section 6.2 is functions of a random variable. Um, we've now covered, I went through chapter 7, which we looked at some special random variables like the uniform, the exponential, the normal. And now that we know a little bit about continuous random variables in the language, uh, one of the harder things we do with them is we take a random variable and we make a new random variable based on that original one. And often we just don't want, besides constructing it, we would like to know the density function of that new random variable. So that's what I mean by functions of, ra of random variable. If you have some random variable x, we're going to look at functions of that x, like x squared or maybe square root of x or ln of x, sine x. Um, for some reason, maybe you, you know, this is a length of a square and we're trying to find area. So there are reasons when you have a random variable that you're going to perform an operation on it and then want the distribution of that new random variable. So in the notes, I had left two examples undone and I thought I would go through them on the whiteboard and see if maybe that uh, it makes it easier to follow and understand this chapter. So um, this is example 10. Uh, X is a random variable, so I'm, I'm using a little bit of slang here, right? So um, assume X is a random variable. Its probability density function, that's your little f of X, is 2 e to the negative 2X for X bigger than 0. So the picture of this guy, right, uh, kind of looks like this, right? Here's my f of X. Um, it's defined for X is bigger than 0. We could go ahead and find the area under the curve of this guy, right? And we know it's going to be 1 because it's a valid density function. And if you've been following me through chapter 7, we actually know this is one of those special random variables called an exponential. And its parameter there is lambda. So um, also, if you've been following me, if, if this is the density function for an exponential, you might also remember what its expected value is. So if the parameter is 2, actually the expected value of this guy is a half. So that's nice to know. But anyway, so here's my random variable. It looks like that. Um, what I'd like to do, though, is make a new random variable. And what I'm going to do to this random variable is take the square root of it. That's my new random variable. And usually we give it a new name. We name it a new random variable like y or w. We don't usually say z because that's pretty much reserved for a, um, a standard normal. But anyway, I'm making a new random variable. And what I would like for this y, I really want his density function. I want an f of y just like I have an f of x there. OK, so there's different techniques for finding little f of y. Um, the book has two. One's called a CDF technique, and the other is called a, transform or a, um, yeah, a transformation technique. I really prefer the CDF technique. Um, you can use either one. This is just the one I'm going to show you today and go through it several times. I like it because it kind of just flows. Once you find the CDF, all the parts just kind of fall into place. I, I like it because it's a nice methodology. I find my bounds well. So anyway, that's my favorite technique for this. So solution to find uh, the PDF, I'm going to use the CDF technique. And I'll just go by piece by piece and kind of show you what I'm doing. So CDF means I want to start with the CDF, the cumulative distribution function of y. So um, I'll just remind myself this written as a function is the cumulative distribution. And by definition, so all I'm doing now is putting into place um, how we define the CDF when we did that. We said capital F is the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to little y. It's the area under the curve, we're talking continuous, up until little y. So all I'm doing here is applying the definition of what capital F is. Okay. Now I, I'm kind of sitting here and going, all right, great, I can't really go any further. I don't know anything about capital Y, but I do know capital X. So what I'm going to do is do a little bit of substitution. This is always where this place is where I would do my substitution. So um, sub y in terms of x, right? So here I have a statement for capital Y in terms of x. I'm just going to substitute so I can get a probability statement in terms of x because I do know at least the density function for x. 
So here's always where I'm subbing in this case. Uh, square root of x less than or equal to y. Um, because this function is a positive function and I want to get capital X by itself, I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. Um, if x could be negative, I would have to be a little bit worried about how I write the statement, but everything's positive so I can square both sides and not break the inequality. So this is probability x less than or equal to y squared. Okay, so I'm on my way. I'm in very good shape now. Um, you know how to do this. We've been doing this in chapter 6, chapter 7. If I just said this is the probability that x is less than or equal to some constant like 3, you would just integrate the area under the curve f of x up until 3. So y squared is just taking the place, really, of a number here. Just think of this as some constant, and this is going to be our upper bound. So my integral is going to look like x is defined 0 to infinity. I want the area under the curve up until, and I don't know where this is going to sit, y squared. I just want that piece, OK? So um, lower bound is 0. Upper bound, area under the curve up to y squared. These are x's. Um, I need f of x for the integration. 2e the negative 2x dx. And this, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I don't have maple, and that's fine. This is a nice uh, closed form antiderivative. So this is going to be, uh, let's see, uh, e to the negative 2x and the little negative out front, right? If I take that guy's derivative, I get 2e to the negative 2x. I'm going to evaluate this from 0 to y squared. Okay, so this is going to give me negative e to the negative 2y squared. Put 0 in there, minus a minus plus e to the 0 is 1. Okay, and you should feel good. We've gotten far, actually, but remember we're trying to find the probability density function. We've come a long way, we're almost there, but this is the CDF. So don't forget, by the time you get to this position, what you found is capital F of y is this, okay? And now to find little f, all you have to do is take a derivative. So little f is capital F derivative. Um, so here we have um, negative e, the negative 2y squared plus 1. Take that guy's derivative. Um, so this is going to be e to the negative 2y squared. Derivative of the inside then is negative 4y. And derivative of 1 is 0. And we're almost done. Um, the only way now I can know if this is valid is that it integrates to 1 over its support. But uh, we kind of have not talked about the support for the minute. And I hope it seems natural to you. Um, x, is bigger than or e or x is bigger than 0, and the random variable y is equal to the square root of x. So if x is bigger than 0, y is bigger than 0. So actually my support here is y bigger than 0. I'm getting my support by looking at x's support, looking at the relationship, and then figuring out what y has to be. So there is my f of y. It's, it's right there. And let's I make, I just feel like this should be positive, shouldn't it? I see, I feel like I made, right, take the derivative of this, negative 4, there's a negative. Yeah, sorry about that. I was starting to think, wow, this is going to be a negative function. That would be terrible. Um, so, yeah, here is then, uh, this is f of y. And if you want to check, um, you could go ahead. If I integrate f of y from 0 to infinity, this better integrate to 1. That's a really nice check because we know... Um, Every valid density function has to um, integrate to 1 over its support, so that's a nice check. Um, I can find its mean. I can find its variance. Uh, it's a nice density function. I, and then I also want to caution you. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, OK, I'll just uh, solve for x and put y in here. And you'll see, if you sub y in here, you're not going to get this formula. So. I have a lot of people try to simplify this very much. And, and unfortunately, there is not really a nice, you know, take a working backwards and just doing an easy plug and chug. Um, if, if you're looking for that style, maybe you will like the transformation technique. But 
to me this flows very nicely and it's a pattern and I'm going to stick to this every time. I don't have a hard time finding my limits of integration and, uh, and it looks nice in the end. So, so anyway, I'll do another one of these, but uh, you'll, you'll also have to let me know. Maybe send me an email and say if this style works for you and if you want some more whiteboard videos. So, Okay, I'll talk to you soon.